If you've been following along to the slow, painful snail crawl that is the MLB offseason, then you've likely heard a name tossed around a bit that may be unfamiliar to you. His name is SoFly Jenga. No, no, that's that's not right. Who who touched my script? His name is Kodai Senga, and he's the most exciting Japanese baseball player set to cross overseas since Shohei Otani. Nearly half the league is vying for his services, and once you learn all about him, it's not surprising why. Senga has accomplished a decade's worth of success, won six Japanese championships, has a pitch that nobody else throws, has already dominated on the US stage, and won't cost your favorite team any draft picks or any additional fees to sign. And if you don't know a thing about him, then I've got you covered. Here's everything you need to know. Senga began his career as a relief pitcher at age 20 in 2013, and he tied a Pacific League record with 34 and a third consecutive scoreless innings on the mound. He punched out 87 batters in just 58 and a third innings that year, good for a 36.7 strikeout percentage, the best among Japanese relievers that season. Senga, however, would pitch just 25 innings the season after and missed a year's worth of play with right shoulder inflammation. For this to happen that early in his career was almost a death blow. Even more surprising was the fact that when Senga returned in 2015, many were shocked to see him thrust into the rotation with questions of his health and no prior experience as a starter. He silenced those qualms by tossing 22 and a third innings over four starts with just one earned run allowed, returning to his reliever role for the ensuing playoff run where the Hawks took the Japan series in five games. Let's talk about those Hawks for a second. Including the title they won in 2014 when Senga was sidelined, the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks won six Japan series titles in seven years from 2014 to 2020, giving Senga plenty of playoff experience on the biggest stage in the NPB. And from 2016 on, Senga was pitching in that atmosphere as a starter, no longer a dominant setup guy. After never throwing over 120 innings in any season of his career, Senga blew past that mark with a 22 start, 170 inning season where he struck out 181 batters. He'd make the all-star team the following season with another dominant performance. And then the season after that, he got his first opening day nine and through his first complete game shutout. This came on the heels of Kodai Senga grabbing the national spotlight for the first time as well. That came in the World Baseball Classic. He pitched as a member of Team Japan that year, and Japan dominated in pool play, going 6-0 against the likes of Cuba, China, Australia, and Israel. Behind Tomoyuki Sagano, Senga was utterly brilliant, tossing nine scoreless innings in pool play and striking out five batters in two innings in the semifinal against the USA. He struck out some of your favorite batters, including Buster Posey. Although Japan lost this game with Senga getting the L, Americans were finally wising up to the talent that he was. He would make the all-world baseball classic team for his efforts, the only Japanese player to do so. After this, his run of brilliance continued into next season. In 2019, a no-hitter and 227 strikeouts, a career high, and a total that would lead the entire NPB. Every season from 2016 to 2019, Senga tossed at least 140 innings as the ace of the richest, most successful baseball team in Japan. After three all-star nods, two no hitters, a thousand career strikeouts, a best nine award, a gold glove award, and of course five Japan series titles going on six, Senka actually was ready to take the leap in 2019. He requested the Hawks to be posted to be signed by a major league baseball team as the 26 year old felt as though he was ready for the biggest challenge in baseball. But the Hawks, fearful of losing their reliable and dominant ace, rejected his request. To any NPB fan, this was not totally surprising as the Hawks were the only NPB team at the time to have never posted a player since the post system was implemented in 1998. This is the same system that enabled Seiya Suzuki to sign with the Chicago Cubs last offseason during a 30-day signing period. But this also meant that he could be an unrestricted free agent down the line, which is what's happening now. He continued about his career in Japan. After tossing at least 140 innings four seasons in a row, including over 170 innings in two of those seasons, minor injuries plagued the ensuing two years for Senga. He was still his usual dominant self when he was healthy, but he battled a recurring ankle injury as well as shoulder problems in both seasons. His 111 innings in 2021 was the smallest sample size he had put together since his first year as a starting pitcher back in 2015. And just when the doubt was beginning to settle back in on Sango, who was set to turn 28 years old, he silenced the critics once again with the best season of his career last year. He got back to a solid 150 inning threshold while turning in his first sub-2 ERA season of his career as a starter. And that takes us to now, the present moment. Because his posting request was denied, in 2019, 
trade in 2019, he is a true free agent now. He's free to test the waters and meet with as many teams as he'd like with no set time restrictions and no interference from the Hawks. After a decade of pitching in the MPB for one team since 2012, Senga is enjoying something he's never experienced before, the freedom to take his talents wherever he desires. Senga is said to have an interest in playing for a big market team that is in a position to win while also developing pitchers. Fangraphs pegged the projected salary for Senga as around four years and $60 million, which is a nice check for a premium overseas talent, but I could actually see Senga making even more because he's not attached to any penalties. From an average annual value standpoint, that's a bit less than the projection for someone like Chris Bassett, who's projected to make three years and $51 million. This makes Senga desirable to a ton of teams, as any team could use a starting pitcher who has the potential to be elite. But before we theorize and try to project where Senga will end up at the end of his sweepstakes, let's first examine how he accumulated all the success in the first place. What makes Kodai Senga a dominant pitcher? Kodai Senga has four primary pitches, with the most used one being, unsurprisingly, his four-seam fastball. Senga has long relied on his pinpoint control, but over the years, the velocity of his fastball has had a staggering development. In 2014, back when he was a reliever, his fastball averaged about 92.6 miles per hour, a solid value, but not enough to overpower MLB hitters. But in 2022, that average has skyrocketed all the way up to 96.0 miles per hour, with Senga being able to throw as hard as 98, even 99 miles per hour on average for a start. While we all know that many MLB pitchers can pump 100 with ease, to see a pitcher add nearly four ticks of average velocity to a pitch over a long period of time is incredibly impressive. Also, if that's a no-sell for you, Senga did throw as hard as 102 miles per hour last year, so there's that. But his signature pitch is not his fastball. That title belongs to his ghost forkball, a pitch we have never seen before in MLB. Last season, hitters whiffed on this pitch over 50% of the time and had a chase rate out of the zone of 40% of the time. There were only seven pitches last year that had a whiff rate over 50% of qualified pitches. That includes Andres Munoz's slider, Spencer Strider's slider, Jacob deGrom's slider, and Edwin Diaz's slider. But there's not a lot of fork balls or changeups that you'll find in this top seven. That's what makes Kodai Senga's signature pitch very special. The pitch almost looks magical. It's something I personally have never really seen before. It tunnels with his fastball almost perfectly before bottoming out and diving nearly into the ground, but it's nearly impossible for hitters to lay off of. For a pitcher who relies on a fastball and a hybrid changeup type pitch primarily, this bodes well for arm health going forward, especially considering the latter pitch is unique to Senga specifically. He does, however, also bring other secondary pitches to the table. This includes a hard cutter at about 88 miles per hour, on par with cut fastballs from guys like Lance McCullers and Pablo Lopez. He also has a sweeping slider at about 83 miles per hour, a pitch I liken a lot to Joe Musgrove's slider, which averages 82.9 miles per hour with long horizontal movement. While his curveball and two-seam fastball seem to be newer pitches that are still a work in progress, I think there's plenty of reason for optimism to see how Senga's arsenal develops. With all of this being said, Senga does have two issues that have plagued him in recent years during his play in Japan, and those are home runs and walks. Senga's walk percentage reached a career-worst 11.3% in 2020, a year where Senga still managed an ERA of 2.20. However, more recently, that walk percentage has hovered around 8.5% in the past two seasons. While lower, this would still be one of the highest values in MLB for qualified pitchers, slotting in fourth behind pitchers like Charlie Morton, Nick Pavetta, and Dylan Cease from last year. But Dylan Cease has showed us that even if you have a high walk percentage, you can still succeed in MLB. It's encouraging that the value is going down yearly, but for Senga to succeed in MLB, he'll need to not only rely on missing bats with his slider and ghost fork, but also generating those swings in the first place. Otherwise, he'll have to rely on his fastball more, which is a good average velocity, but doesn't have some of the same overpowering metrics we're used to seeing now. His home run totals were also a prescient issue in the past, with Senga averaging over 1.0 home run per nine over a four-year stretch from 2016 to 2019, a value which would have been in the bottom 25 of qualified starters last MLB season. In the three years since, however, this average home run per nine has fallen to 0.3 in a trio of seasons. I think this is an issue Senga has put behind him, but it's also definitely worth mentioning, and I'm curious to see how it translates to MLB ballparks. Okay, enough about the numbers and the hypotheticals, let's get to the good stuff, the rumors. Where do we think Kodai Senga is going to sign? What team makes the most sense? First, let's list out all the options, which is basically, well, everyone. Senga desires a big market organization and is set to sign a contract worth anywhere from 70 to 85 million for four to five years. Senga has already met with the Padres, the Giants, the Diamondbacks, the Mets, the 
Mariners, and the Rangers, and representatives from the Yankees, the Red Sox, the Dodgers, the Angels, the Cubs, and the Blue Jays have reached out to his team. If you're keeping count, that's 12 teams, aka 40% of the league. But here's who I think has some slight edges. Senga played with both Nick Martinez and Robert Suarez for SoftBank in Japan and maintains a close relationship with Yu Darvish. If I were to move to a new country where I didn't know the language or anyone in general, having a few friends may be comforting and could help me assimilate a little better. Advantage Padres. We have journalistic evidence from The Athletic that his meeting with Steve Cohen and the orange and blue brass went well. Plus, GM Billy Epler has had success scouting and signing Japanese talents before. Advantage Mets. Speaking of Otani, I'm pretty sure Senga would enjoy the idea of pitching alongside arguably the greatest Japanese baseball talent ever. Plus, Anaheim has generated a decent Japanese fan base thanks to the perennial MVP candidate. Advantage Angels. It's really hard to predict these kinds of things, but if I'm placing down betting odds on this kind of thing, I think the most likely scenarios have to be Senga going to the New York Mets or the San Diego Padres. I know, biased Met fan, call me out, fine. I think in general he ends up on one coast or the other in a big market and could make up to a hundred million dollars if this bidding war draws on longer than we expect. It's going to be really exciting stuff and whatever team gets Kodai Senga in the end, I think they're going to be a lot better for it. Regardless of where he goes, I'm excited to watch Senga pitch and if you want to go get tickets to watch him pitch next season, you got to go to SeatGeek. Thank you to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. The MLB offseason is a slow crawl right now, but that means you can stock up on tickets for next season and you can get $20 off at SeatGeek right now with promo code JOLLY. SeatGeek has one of the best ticketing apps out there and whether it's for concerts, baseball, football, festivals, basketball, or more, SeatGeek puts tickets from all over the web in one place to make buying as simple as possible. They've got an incredibly easy system for finding the best seats possible for the right price, so look for the green dots. Green means a good deal. That's pretty simple. If you use code Jolly today, you can get $20 off at SeatGeek right now. That'll be for your first purchase, so make sure you click the link in my description to download the app and use that code today. Thank you to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video, and I'll see you guys next time.